Welcome to Bite Size Den Marketing. We are here today with the lovely Haley Katcherset. Haley works at the Aesthetic and Implant Dentistry of Lubbock. She is both a hygienist and marketing coordinator at the office and has experience that we would like to know more about. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Haley, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So the first thing that I want to touch on with you is the importance of having a marketing coordinator in the office or if you do not have that, to have somebody in the office that helps out with the marketing efforts. What has been beneficial to your uh, dental practice where you are to have somebody as yourself that can be that connection uh, when it comes to marketing efforts and making sure that things are happening? My dad, so I'm Dr. Morgan's daughter. I'm also, I've been a hygienist for 15 years. And he decided, I, I call this like semi-retirement, but it's not. He works the <laughs> time. But y'all had been able to work with him and really grow his practice in Midlothian. He um, sold that. He had been a dentist there for 30 years and wanted to just have a startup in Lubbock, Texas, where he just did what he loved doing, which is um, aesthetics and implants. Big part of our vision, though, like included, mar was marketing. Like we believed we could do it. We had seen the success that he had had in Midlothian with Pain Free, but we knew in order to do that, in order to just come to West Texas and just set up a, a dental office and say, "Hey, we're here," you've got to you've got to put that out there. And so that requires um, it's not just a couple of like. Uh, happy Fourth of July there. or Happy yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, if you're gonna talk the talk, you walk the walk. So we needed to mm -hmm. show that he was a really premier, you know, Dallas dentist that was here in West Texas, and all of these things that people, um, you know, in West Texas may have been commuting to Dallas or Houston. I've had patients from West Texas that commuted to Houston for for aesthetic work. Mm -hmm. That it's right here. That was part of the first part of it. Was like we're gonna market. We're gonna market heavy. Because we need people to know, like we need the message to get mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. So that no, exactly. role was pretty crucial from the get-go. A question that we often ask is the role that a marketing coordinator plays within the office. With many offices that we've dealt with, people don't want to do a job on top of their job, if I can put it that way. We tried out, we had a product mm -hmm. at Pain Free some time ago that was called uh, the Dental Marketing Box. And the whole idea behind it was that we would put a box together with the whole toolkit of what a dentist and the staff would need for practice to market themselves. Mm -hmm. We would send them that box and mm -hmm. it was not successful at all because we realized that dentists don't want to do their own marketing. Mm -hmm. They want to either pay someone mm -hmm. uh, to do it for them or have someone within their own staff that's doing it. But like I said, very often you don't want a job on top of a job and then it falls flat. So luckily you're in mm -hmm. a unique situation where you are talented enough to be able to do both. But for the officers and most officers that mm -hmm. don't have that marketing co coordinator, what would your mm -hmm. argument be for why it's so important to have someone in your role that can work with the marketing agency to make sure that things get done? I think the big thing is consistency. So we mark off time when like we, we know we're going to have a reveal. My time on the schedule is marked off. So I do do dental hygiene here, and, but we try to focus on my job being primarily marketing and a little hygiene. In my last practice, I was full hygiene and then um, wanted to help out with the marketing. We had a marketing team that, that we worked with and the hustle and flow is too much in a dental office to make marketing a side note. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to see your regular patient load a day and then be like, oh yeah, like let me shift gears and be intentional with this patient on getting the marketing content that we want. Like my brain doesn't work that way. And um, other people may be able to swing it, but I like need the time I have like my little notepad. I know what I want to, to get from that appointment or that sit down conversation or those photos, but I don't, I don't switch gears that easy. I don't go from being like hygienist to marketer super fast unless it mm -hmm. is very um, intentional and marked off on the schedule. So if another office doesn't want to like 
hire someone else to come in and be their marketing brain, which you really do need. So, and I can, I'll get into that in a minute, but if you don't do that, then it needs to be an intentional mark off on the schedule. It probably mm. needs to be the same person for the most part, because the more I do it, the more I'll, I'll catch the errors in what I'm doing. Like, dang, I forgot to, we, we bought some little cheap mics that you can plug into your iPhone. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can gather content that doesn't have to be like high end, top of the line, but even the little mic for the iPhone, it creates a better video to that I can either use, or sometimes I'll send a pain free and, and wait till y'all have a turnaround time to get that back to me. But you know, like I forgot it one time. So the, the audio is terrible, but I remember that because I'm the one person that that comes back to. One thing that you said that I truly agree with is people just get too busy. And if marketing is not a focus in your office, it will always stay mm -hmm. a side note. Um, that's where, where I like to think mm -hmm. that having somebody like you in the practice has been extremely beneficial to making sure that things actually get done. Because as you said, if you are the front desk person, or if you are the hygienist, and you have this whole other job that you also have reminders, and you have things to do, to then say, okay, I have to now do patient mm -hmm. testimonials and remember, I mean, for most people, they, they can't do that and fall through the cracks. And then you miss out, as you just mentioned, on the high quality videos and the patient testimonials and making sure that things are going live on the website and the mm -hmm. social media and that things are actually happening. So no, I, I completely agree with you mm -hmm. that, um, that there's real benefit to it. I think taking it like my link with um, pain free. And the reason I think an office needs a marketer in there is because my relationship with the patient is not anything pain-free can have. Sometimes I'll ask people in their interview, like if you were going to talk to a future patient, what, what advice would you give them on why they should reach out to us? And, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes I'm asking them that because I know, I already know why they would, why they would give that answer because I've been there with them through it. And so I love working with pain-free. You guys keep me on track, but I think it's kind of silly for a dentist to expect pain-free to get the content that, that I'm able to get only because you don't have someone who is there with the patient every step of the way, mm -hmm. going through treatment, accepting treatment. The pain-free can't, can't share that same experience, that same in-office experience. And so that's what I think brings our marketing up a, a notch is having somebody there who knows the story and can mm -hmm. then relate that to pain free, but you've got to have that person in there that knows. Exactly. And to, yeah, to convey what actually happened, I completely to paint the story for your marketing team and, and to have that person there. Cause clearly when it comes to marketing and, and making sure that things are happening there, um, your office is on the ball and it's, it's working. What comes after marketing is patience. Mm -hmm. And one thing that is so important these days is the patient experience. That's what, I mean, what all offices talk about is what people's reviews are about. It's what all any marketing efforts are about is what's that patient experience and, and what is your practice doing different and why should I come to you? And when you and I spoke before, I know you had mentioned that you guys do things a bit different at um, at your dental office and it's something special and you really, really are there from the first step until the last one with that patient. Run us through what makes the aesthetic and implant dentistry of Lubbock different when it comes to the patient experience and, and why is your practice so special? From the first phone call, we have Tasha. She's highly trained at the front desk and she's just real. Um, I know a lot of patients just from the get-go will, will connect to Tasha and um, already feel comfortable before they've even come in the door because of the way she interacts with them. Just takes her time. She'll even go above and beyond to, to answer their questions or maybe go look up. Um, we're a cash pay dental office, but maybe she'll go look up your insurance for you. Um, their first visit is really we mark off an hour and a half of our time and of Dr. Morgan's time so that we can get thorough um, x-rays. We do a 3D scan. And then, um, you know, we let people know that, you know, there's a fee for that service, but that you're getting this one on one time with Dr. Morgan that we mm. think it is really valuable. It's very and we let valuable. People know that. 
It, it really is. If you, if you know Dr. Morgan and you know my dad, he loves to visit. And our job at that, at that first visit is to know like what, what's the patient's concern, hear their story. And then um, we don't, we may, you know, if Dr. Morgan's like ready to put a treatment plan together, then we will. Um, and if, if not, we're, we're happy to tell them, hey, we've, we've, now that we've collected all of this information, and um, usually Dr. Morgan will tell them, I'm, I need to sit down. I'm going to put together some options and, and then we'll bring you back in and we'll talk about them. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's a lot of compassion, empathy, taking time. I mean, in this day and age, everybody's the hustle and bustle. You know, how fast can we do a turnaround? People really value just you taking that little bit of extra time to mm-hmm. sit down and answer questions. And um, so that's their first visit. And then from there, you know, it's pretty fun at this office because we're doing a lot of cosmetic and full small makeovers or all on implant retained dentures. By the end, I mean, most of our patients really do feel like family to us. We, we've we gotten to know them. We've, we've really bonded with them. And then the look on their face when they see their smile for the first time. And mm. we, we all um, huddle in the room. And I have a, my iPhone on. And we film that first, it's, it's a game changer and it's a game changer for your marketing, but that first initial look of the patient being able to see their smile, you know, if it's veneers, it's just that glamor, you know, Mm -hmm. if it's, um, we had a gentleman who literally had no teeth. And, and so when he saw his smile that he hadn't had in years for the first time, I mean, we're all crying, we're all in the room crying. So you, that's a bond. I mean, you can't, yeah, you can't ever forget those things. And that's so, a bond. are there any other beyond that gentleman, any other memorable cases that you can remember where you yes. it, look, you just changed someone's life. You just absolutely changed someone's life. Is there one that comes to mind? So in West Texas, we've got a lot of um, farmers, ranchers out here and we had this kind of big burly rancher, you know, and he's, um salt of the earth like just knows how to make you laugh and um we had talked that morning you know is what's his he had it all on x he had so one of the things about farmers and ranchers is they really will grind their teeth down to nothing um Mm -hmm. because of their lifestyle i mean they're always worried about something at night whether they know it or not and so it shows on their teeth and that's what had happened to this gentleman he basically didn't have a smile anymore and because his teeth were nubs, he'd worn, for all my dental people, he'd worn through the dentin and now needed a root canal. He had an abscess from where, not from decay. So anyways, we're that morning, we're like, I wonder what his reaction's going to be, if he's going to care or not. And uh, he was tearing up before we even handed him the mirror. And so with this, this big burly man who does, he comes off as real gruff um, when he saw his smile for the first time and he's just trying to, keep the tears back and it shocked all of us. We didn't expect that. And um, just such a neat experience, such a blessing to get to be a part of that. It was, it was so impactful and moving. It was just really neat. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely amazing. And that is just a, a testament to what an incredible difference these kind of treatments can make in someone's life. And mm-hmm. very often, I think, people would associate the dentist with the bad guy for lack of a better term at this point, because we all know about dental anxiety. We all know about, I always say, I don't know why the movies give dentists such a bad rap because they're not any more scary than any other doctor out there. Um, in the, to the contrary, yeah. I find dentists very fun people <laughs> and, and, and good to be around. So, um, <laughs> Because my dad's also a dentist. Um, I don't know if you if you knew that, but oh. usually you would get yeah. Usually you'd get that idea that that they have this people have this idea of of a dentist in their mind. But when you realize that, like that mm-hmm. uh, uh, farmer that you just mentioned, like I mean, even those kind of people that you would consider with these rough and tough guys, like if after the art that a dentist has created. Mm-hmm um when they see it and mm-hmm. it can just bring them to tears i mean to anybody out there that that is missing teeth or not happy with their smile like how can that not speak to you i think too and um, being a, a dental hygienist i've heard all those stories i think a lot with dentists that 
it's that people have gone in before and been shamed, you know, mm -hmm. and I just, I don't know if medical doctors just don't give you that same shame, but I, I'm a lot, I feel like I'm telling people a lot and um, you're in the right spot. We're here to fix things. Like if you didn't have anything broken, we wouldn't need a job. And so this is our job to take care of you. But a lot, I'll have people apologizing to me before we even take a look. And, and I'm like, what, what, why are you apologizing? Like, <laughs> this is my job. You came to the right spot. I want to take, we want to take care of you as a team. Our, a patient we finished up, I was doing her interview after her treatment and she said, can I be real in it? And I said, yes, like, please do. She said, I scheduled three appointments with y'all. She said, um, and I canceled them. I rescheduled them because I was so scared to come in. I was scared of what you're going to tell me. And I was ashamed of my teeth. And, and so I said, no, say that because for every one of you that there's, that's a lot of people's same response to come into the dentist is something about being the shame of of maybe feeling like you neglected your teeth or, or maybe before when you were younger, you were, you were just conditioned that way to, to know when you go and you're going to be told what a bad brusher or whatever you yeah. are. That actually gets me thinking. And you also right. It is that people are ashamed. Like when I would help out my dad with his Google, my business, most of the messages coming through is, I've not been to the dentist in three years and my teeth are absolutely terrible. Um, I'm struggling to eat and mm -hmm. I've had to muck up the courage to even send this message. Um, can you please help me? Mm -hmm. and, and just the fact that we're seeing that. So, I mean, multiple, multiple messages that have come through is exactly that. And, and with what you're saying now, I, I could not agree more. It, it is exactly that people are ashamed or scared mm -hmm. and, the mind shift needs to happen of the dentist is the solution. Like finding a dentist that you trust and that will work with mm -hmm. you is the solution and can change. You should not, just like you should not feel guilty about taking your car to a mechanic if the car's not working properly. Like, as you were just saying, mm -hmm. like hygienist or a dentist is the same. They are like, I want to help you. I want to be there for you. Haley, so one thing that you do at your practice that's really special and that I've Actually, I've not heard of it before, before you had spoken to me about it, is the celebration appointment. And I would mm -hmm. love to know more about what, what does that mean? What is that? So just kind of like we were talking about earlier, being intentional. What we like to do is when we finish a case here is we mark time. It's called a celebration visit. I tell the patient to um, come looking nice, you know, come dressed up. You got your new smile. And um, I want to take some photos of you. And so it's really interesting. Um, the more we've been doing this, the more I've seen that the, you're, you're trying to take photos of people who um, have been hiding their smiles for years. And so they don't even really feel comfortable in front of it. They, they really don't like the idea of it, but they're, they're pretty much all open to it, which is really sweet. I take about an hour of my time. We start, I have a list. I've, I've kind of curated like my own little list of like what I, what I want to get photo wise. I do um, like just beautiful headshots. Then I take them outside. We do some natural lighting headshots. When at their first visit, we do take a series of intraoral photos and I'm, I'm kind of particular about how I want them. And I have, again, I'm good at lists. So I have a list. I want this shot. But the main shot that really speaks to people is the natural smile. So zooming in right on their natural smile. Um, I kind of want that same series of, of photos at their at the celebration visits. And then um, I'll usually sit them down then and take a small interview on their experience here. What I found is pretty neat about it is... Um, these people who haven't usually like taking photos, this is their first photo shoot, you know? We had one lady, she's hilarious, but she was like, I'm a word, send that one to me. And she's like in her eighties, but she said, I'm gonna send that one to my boyfriend. <laughs> so, <laughs> we got her her photo. But, um, but you know, you get to see this smile transformation from these people that didn't wanna ever show, would always, you know, make sure they didn't show their teeth when they talked even to this awesome, and headshot. And then for us, you know, it's a lot of content. So I try to gather as much as I can. And I have a whole like, um, 
you know, I want the before and after of the close up of the smile. The headshots are just awesome. We love using those in our, in our social media. And so it helps me out a lot. We have our celebration appointment and then either that day or the next day, I focus on extracting all the content that I can from what I gathered that day. And then I use social pilot, which pain free had helped me find to schedule out posts. So as the marketer and hygienist, and it makes it to where I have like my set marketing time and outside, once I've got stuff auto dropping, then I can spend, you know, those Thursday mornings specifically on hygiene um, Mm. while my content is dropping. I'm not having to think every day, what am I going to drop today? What am I going to do today? And I can kind of, I can manage both jobs in the office, but it, it does take for my dentist people out there. If you're going to designate that one person, they need to have the time to sit down and, and schedule drops or to sit down and maybe edit photos or whatever that might be. But it's a really neat visit. It's great. It helps us out, but it's also just, I can't put a word on it. Just seeing these people smile, you know, and getting to show them, Hey, this is you. Like this is your new smile. Like anybody out there, listen to this, just go do it. Just make sure everybody has a celebration appointment. You'll love it. (laughs) That fantastic. Haley, thank you so much for your time today. It was lovely talking to you, and I will be sure to have you back on. 